Hello, this is Lise Nielsen, Artist in the Woods. I am going to be painting a sunset ocean view of some waves, gentle waves rolling in. Uh, it's my favorite place to go to watch the ocean and to um, gather information to bring back with me, but also to do my plein air work. I am an artist working in the Sierras of California. I spent most of my life living right around this area on the Central Coast. And so I do some mountain scenes and I do some ocean scenes and then a little bit in between. I love to travel in my small van and paint. And then I bring my small studies home to work in the studio. on my canvas using a mixture of cadmium yellow medium and alizarin crimson. I did do a little sketch. I'm kind of moving my light source over a little bit. So if I were to mark off on my drawing, uh, my here, here's the middle areas. I usually put a mark down for that. And then I mark it into say thirds. Thirds is what I generally use. So I'm just eyeballing it. I'm not taking exact measurements. It'll be probably close enough. Um, most artists have a pretty good eye in terms of space. So, and then I can put those same measurements on here. Again, just eyeballing it into thirds and it'll help me with my drawing. I uh, went ahead and drew in the design on this. You can see that this part here is raised up and it's more in this area. Um, I want to make sure that I have this sweeping this way and then this way that's going to be a part of my pattern. My next step with this is to uh, mix up color and um, I start usually with my darks um, and then as I'm mixing color I'm comparing um, value and you hear me say that a lot if you've been watching my videos. Um, this, this is all about making comparisons. So I'm looking at this value versus how dark this value is, and this value, if I'm just looking at my darks, I'm comparing my darks, and then of course the dark of the sky, which is lighter than the darks down in here.
So this across here, this whole wave here, I'm gonna take as one, and it's more in light. I'm gonna paint it the way it moves. Downward, downward motion with your, some of it can go across, but then make your brush strokes go downward. I've got some of this lavender in color. in here this is that flatter part of the wave in between the two waves don't want to do is get color on too thick that is wrong. I want to make sure I'm being deliberate with my strokes. Remember this water is flowing around in here. It can't just be having fun and making designs, they have to make sense. figure out where the where most of the, the dark darks are in these rocks and then go back in with the lighter tone seems like right up against the water they're darker
they don't get too much definition in here and the values are really close as I said before this isn't a painting about rocks this is a the rocks just act as a another feature a barrier for the eye to stay in where it needs to be holding my eye in where it needs to be. It's good when you're painting, especially when you're painting a little larger, uh, not necessarily out when you're painting a really small one in plein air, but it's really good to use as big a brush as you can handle. And you'll see me even in plein air using um, using a bigger brush than a lot of people will use. bit of yellow, a little bit of red goes into that whitish tone. Same kind of thing I do for waves. Anything that's catching the light. Just a touch on the very edge of your brush is what I'm talking about. I still remember the first sky painting I tried to do, and it was terrible. But um, it, I think about that every once in a while because uh, I think about how the eye, you have to train your eye. And I was so, so dark that my clouds were so dark, they didn't look like clouds. And it, for me, you know, I thought I was doing a great job, but um, that's how our eye, the difference between an, a trained eye and an untrained eye. And it takes a while to train your eye.
It's a very delicate stroke, a um, very delicate touch to this. Because you want that light part to come off without disturbing what's underneath. be heavy-handed with this kind of a sky. There are skies where you can uh, be a little heavier with your paint. So now you get this really pretty pink pattern that comes through here. So I'm stepping back and I'm looking at um, how it's reading. I just want to get these sort of like dots and dashes. Light sitting right on top of that wave in the form of this. I want to make sure it's light enough. It's very light and uh, it's going to be right in here. And it's gonna make this read like the top of a wave. Okay. Some of these are in here, pretty light also. to that color. Sometimes you, you, it's surprising which colors help to make something read the right way. And that was a little bit of purple added into that blue there. orange tone because especially right in here it's getting more orange and that helped to soften that up also um, this blue and it's a little bit green not much and it's kind of coming over that wave
Um, I want to come in with some brighter colors down in here. Let's jump right into it. Um, not that bright. And now I'm starting to paint a little bit thicker. And I'm thinking of the flow of water when I'm doing this. just an emotional uh, experience. This is a cognitive experience as well. It needs to affect the emotional in people and in me when I'm doing this. Um, but I, I need to have a clear understanding of what I'm making, what I'm creating here. And to get the effect that I want it to have. It's this bluish, greenish water in here. And it needs to read as splashing foam. So I need to paint it as such. And because I've painted other colors, now I'm kind of having to paint over those colors. Oil paint does work fine for that, but it also is affected by what's underneath it. So if, if it's coming in too dark or um, I can't, you know, if the paint underneath is too thick and I'm not getting my colors to read right, then I need to scrape out what's underneath and try to um, make it better. Um, I love the interplay of color within the motion of these, within these wave areas. You have the darks and the lights and the reflections. And you have so much going on with all these colors. That's the challenge. Make them work together to show the image that you want people to see. I get my colors mixed up and then I use those to um, mix up other colors. So that's what's going on here. I, I'm mixing into this green in the back um, to try to get this, um, this green that's going on over here. I almost got it. It's, it needs a little change to it. next to these yellows and oranges because that's the complement play of colors.
I'm trying to put some highlights on and trying to get the water to read the right way without making it too busy. Filling over off of that and then falling into shadow there. You can see where it, it just it has to be exactly the right value to read right in sh the foam and shadow down in here has to be just right to read right. The colors do change if you made all of these the same colors it would not look right. You have to really pay attention to what those tones are in there. This is a clean brush, okay. Very light touch here. I'm just gonna keep going with this until I feel that it looks more like a, a solid shape in here. You see the water coming in here with the current and that's what you want to try to follow with your brush. that I'm, I'm okay with it being darker in the water and then there's some of this that comes in if it's here then it's going to be on this side of that red It could be just wave shadow in here. Um, so 
some of those reds um, across in here are nice. You want to get you know away from this um, being too cautious the water isn't cautious it's just going everywhere out there there are some some patterns and designs you want in there but you want to do it in a free flowing manner some of these foam areas in here that lay on top of things. You want to use the side of your brush for these. Uh, and I say, say that over, over the idea of using a small brush. Um, the side of the brush is the perfect tool for these foam parts. So painting a, an ocean scene at night, you have to get away from the idea that this is white. Nothing is white in here except for a little bit in here, but certainly not the water.
little dab of alizarin. Some of that to read um, more brilliant if I go in underneath it with a with a shadow. And in this case, I've chosen a a warm shadow. It could be a cooler shadow in some areas. So you can let the shadows guide your eyes in here. Uh, there is a there is a wave. Uh, that's right in here. That's a small-ish wave. sitting on top of that. This is in shadow, so I'm trying to keep it cooler, darker.
you know, this has been a fun one. <laughs> I hope you try these. This is a blast. Um, I am going to sign this painting and be done with it tonight. Uh, this was a one day painting. That's cool. I love it when I can do that. I don't think I need to change anything, but there's always tomorrow. Thank you for joining me. Please uh, give it a thumbs up if you like my video and I hope you subscribe if you're enjoying watching these. This is Lise Nielsen, Artist in the Woods. Happy painting.